Hi, welcome to another episode of Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Paul Zalza. And I'm Dr. Brad Weening. And today we have with us... Megan Abraham. I'm a physiotherapist here at the hospital. What are you talking about today? Today we're going to be talking about our prehab knee exercises. So these are the exercises that you would be doing before you have your total knee replacement. So prehab. You kind of took hab out of rehabilitation, yeah. added pre to it to imply you got to do this before your surgery. Yes, prehab. exactly. It's an English lesson as well as a physiotherapy lesson. <laughs> all bases. So I think this is critical. I tell my patients it's really important and Paul and I have talked about this before. It's like training for a marathon. So the more work you do before, the easier it's going to be afterwards. I feel like both physically and mentally, at least then you don't have to learn the exercises again. Yeah. And we've said this before, for total knee replacement, it is a lot of work. So you might as well get started early. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. I'll be the patient. What's wrong? I ha I'm getting a total knee. All right. Ooh. Is this going to hurt? If I have arthritis in my <clears throat> knee and I have to do this exercise, does it hurt to do these exercises? That's the thing when you're exercising with osteoarthritis is it can hurt. It can mm -hmm. cause pain. However, I tell my patients if you're exercising and your pain goes up to about a 4 or a 5 on 10, that's typically okay as long as it goes back down to your normal baseline within about 24 hours. And generally speaking, Megan, how many times should I do these and how many times a day? So with knees especially, it's very important that you're doing your exercises three times a day because that's what's expected of you after you have the surgery as well. So it does get you into that habit. Um, and you're aiming for five to 10 repetitions of each exercise. Can I do it too much? If you said three and I'm one of those kind of people and we have a few of those in our practice, I'm gonna do it seven or eight times, is that bad? It's not necessarily bad as long as you're not driving your pain up into levels that you can't tolerate. Okay. Okay. Okay, let's start. Exercise number one. Number one. So the first exercise that we're going to do is just some range of motion exercises. So okay. for this one here, you're going to slide your heel up towards your bum as far as you can comfortably, and then you slide that leg right back down. They should make a slider to make that easier. Well, funny you say that. So what we use in the clinic that makes things quite a bit easier are these slider boards. So if you don't mind lifting your leg sure. up. We're these are either homemade or commercially available. Exactly. I actually had a, a patient who made one for his wife out of cherry wood. It was beautiful. Wow. Yeah, it was very nice. Dedication. Fancy. Yeah, it was really good. So if you don't mind, try again sliding your heel up like that. Was that a little bit easier with the board? It was a lot easier. Yeah. I feel like I'm on an infomercial. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was so easy. <laughs> now, to make it even better, if you're the type of person who has arthritis and it's quite painful even to bend, you can use any kind of a strap that you have at home, something that doesn't stretch. If you wrap this around your foot and then oh, wow. you can use your arms. So slide that heel up again, and then you can use your arms a little bit to help you as well. Okay. Try to keep them down. You don't want to aggravate your shoulders. Right. Well yeah. done, Daniel son. I was going to say a belt, <laughs> but I guess I mean, if your belt's this big, yeah. you're having some difficulty. Okay. Yeah. And, and that just, does make it easier for sure. Yeah. yeah it yeah. looks like you quit Aikido a little early. You, know? <laughs> you only got to the yellow belt. <laughs> okay. So that's our first exercise. So let's get this out of the way. Excellent. You could also use a garbage bag that if you're against yeah. technology. You can just use a garbage bag instead of a slider. Yeah, so. and that works just as well, and you can still use a strap too if it makes it a little bit easier. So the second exercise we're going to do is targeting your quadricep muscles. Okay. So this is very, very important with knees. Um, one of the things with knee arthritis is people tend to have weak quads, um, and because those quads weaken quickly after surgery as well, it's important to get them activated. I would say the other thing is it's important because we cut them. During the operation, yeah. and then we sew them. So yeah. it is by far, I think, the thing that generates the most pain yeah. and yeah. is the most critical to rehab. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so for this exercise, what you're going to do is push that knee down into the bed. You're squeezing your thigh muscles. You pull the toes towards the nose, holding for five seconds, and then you relax down. Okay, let's try that one more time. So push your knee down into the bed, exactly, and relax down. Yeah. Nice quad. Good Thank quad. You. One thing that I would say is some patients are going to be stuck with their knee. You were about to I was talk. just about to say that. I won't steal that. your thunder. No, that's right. okay. okay. So All I right. do get people coming to the prehab class who do have a bit of a bend in their knee because of their arthritis. Yeah. Okay. Which we call a flexion contracture. It's very common. You know, and you might hear us say that in the office here. You got a bit of a flexion contracture there. Um, so in these instances, this exercise can be quite painful. Yeah. So what I do is to get a little bit of a folded up towel and we'll put that underneath the knee. And that just gives you a little bit more room yeah. where you can still do the exercise. So if you push your knee down, there. 
and then relax. Sometimes it's even worse. You know, you might have even more of a bend, so I'll use like a little bit of a pillow or something, okay. but still so that they're, you're activating your quads. Okay. Okay? Good, that's exercise two. The so third, we have range of motion, yep. the quadricep strengthening. And quadricep strengthening again, okay? okay? It's a common theme with knees. So we'll get this underneath your knee here like this. Um, this roll is nothing fancy. So whatever you have at home works. A coffee can, apple juice can, just wrap that in a towel and that's perfectly fine. Um, you're gonna push your knee down into the roll, lift your lower leg up, pull the toes towards the nose, and again, you're squeezing those quad muscles. Hold for five seconds. And then you relax it back down to the table. Okay, so coming up again, beautiful. And down. I'm a quick steady. Yeah. You are doing amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, the next one we're going to do, what I like to do with this one is the leg that's not being operated on, you're just going to bend it like this. And this just puts your back in a nicer position for this next exercise, okay? okay? So from here, what you're going to think about doing is keeping this leg as straight as you can. You pull those toes towards the nose and then you're gonna lift that leg up to touch my hand. Good, you hold that for five seconds and then relax it down. So this is a straight leg raise exercise. Coming up again. So again, a common theme of quad strengthening. Right. And definitely that can hurt people's backs for sure. If you have a lower back issue, then just do your best. Exactly. If it's too painful, if it's aggravating other structures, I tell people just to forget it and they can pick it up again after yeah. surgery. So it's all about the quads. Yeah, for no the knees, trouble. definitely. Um, okay, the next one we're going to do, and this one is typically an exercise my patients really don't like Ooh. after surgery. So um, <laughs> <laughs> So for this one, you can use just a little bit of a rolled up towel or something to put underneath your heel. And then in this position, I just tell people either get a book, watch a movie, listen to some music to distract you, and you're just going to let that leg try to, to be as straight as possible, okay? What you'll probably experience with this one is some really, really, really strong stretching on the underside of the knee, um, especially after surgery, but it's a very important exercise to reg regain your strengthening after surgery. Or, sorry, your straightening after surgery. I like this one because it tries to get rid of that flexion contractor. If you imagine trying to walk around with mm -hmm. a flexion contractor with your knee bent all the time, it's exhausting because you can never lock your knee and your quadriceps are working every phase of gait yeah but if you can get your leg out straight then you can lock your knee so when you walk it'll be a lot less tiring yeah. and that's something we battle with after surgery too is trying to get people back to their full extension so if you can work on it before it'll go a long way to helping after mm -hmm. and just so that you know you're probably not going to get rid of your flexion contractor with your prehab exercises no. that's actually our one of our jobs or goals in the operating room and then for you to maintain it afterwards but anything you can do to improve it or reduce the size of the contracture is beneficial definitely okay so this one the parameters are a little bit different um, so instead of like five to ten repetitions you're aiming to hold this for two minutes three minutes five minutes working up to ten minutes if you can tolerate it now, Megan, as I'm someone that tries to minimize the amount of work, what if I just kind of do this a little bit? Is that no. okay? No, because Ooh, as soon as you cheater, do that, cheater. you can see exactly what right. happened. Is you end it up feels with a, a lot better when you do that. Cheater, of externally rotated your hip. <laughs> yeah, saw that. So the knee loves, when it's in pain, loves to be in a little bit of a bent position. Yeah. So by rolling your foot out like that, you can see right away that your knee bends. Okay. So you're not getting the benefits of this exercise, so and you're just to maintaining the ceiling. that. Exactly. Okay. Okay? Number five. Done. Number five. The last exercise... If anybody is having a hard time doing that first exercise I showed you, so the sliding, yep. what I get them to do is sit up um, in a chair or at the edge of the bed. And usually with the feet on the floor, but for now we'll just keep it like this for the sake of filming. Mm -hmm. But what you're gonna work on doing is just trying to bend your knee back as far as you can. Okay. Just to get a bend in the knee. Okay. And then straightening it back out again. Okay. okay? And then you just bend it back. And that can help improve some of that flexion, your bending as well, um, but sometimes it's just a better position for patients. I'm gonna just adjust the camera so you can see that. <laughs> so I'm pulling back as hard as I can with this right leg here, mm -hmm. and then extending it all the way up. Yeah. And then slowly pulling it back again. Exactly. Yeah, that, you can imagine that would hurt if you had a reduced terminal range of motion yeah. flexion for sure. Yeah, and that's it. Okay, Pretty awesome, that was number six. Yeah. And so we're going to do that five or ten times for each exercise, mm -hmm. ideally three times a day and yes. more if your pain's not too bad. Exactly. Okay.
afterwards, do you tell them to use ice or take any medication or anything like that? Um, so medication I leave up to family doctor or sure. the surgeon to discuss. Um, but yes, if you want to put some ice on for about 10, 15 minutes after you exercise, okay. then that can definitely help alleviate if you have any pain. Awesome. Yeah. So, if you, if you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel. And remember, <laughs> uh, you are in charge of your own health. It's me here behind the camera. We'll see you next time.